Perhaps you've had this experience before where you get the flu shot and then a month later you get sick from the flu. And you're like, why did I even get the vaccine in the first place? Let's dive into why this occurs. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here where we make difficult biology concepts simple. And today we're gonna discuss why certain vaccines don't work on occasion. So I'm gonna look inside a specific vaccine and we're gonna use the example of a flu vaccine. This is and inside the flu vaccine, we will see a variety of things. And I'll draw them here quick. So you'll see one of two things. One thing you could see are these dead viruses that will have a specific what's called antigen on their surface. Now, whenever I say the word antigen for the rest of this video, just think of this as a little flag that the virus is holding out saying, hey, I'm a virus. Now, you may see the dead viruses with their antigens, or you may just see their antigens by themselves. Now, what are these antigens specifically? Well, these are the predicted strains of the flu that we're expecting to see in the upcoming flu season. Now, what is a strain? Well, this is just specifically a different flag shape. So different viruses will have different strains or different flags. So when we inject these dead strains or these antigens by themselves into your bloodstream, what will happen is this you will have small white blood cells called B cells. And these are going to notice these flags and certain B cells will actually amazingly already have these little receptor complexes that will fit perfectly onto the antigen surface. And this process of having this B cell actually find those antigens takes give or take anywhere from two to 14 days. So once your B cells locate these antigens from these strains of viruses, they will initiate basically an immune response. And that immune response may make you feel just a tad bit under the weather, but it's completely normal because you're actually learning how to fight off these potential strains. Now, what do I mean by potentially fight off? Well, once this occurs, the B cells are going to begin producing things called antibodies. And what antibodies are, are these free floating proteins that these B cells make that will look incredibly similar to the receptor complexes that we had here. So let me draw them. And as you can see, these antibodies will fit perfectly into those potential antigens. Now, antibodies are incredible. I like to think if we've produced antibodies for something, we win the war against that. What these antibodies will do is neutralize, so like handcuff, and target the virus for destruction. So what that would look like is this. So once these are produced, these guys specifically would come around and basically attach freely to these antigens on the viruses. And once they do that, it neutralizes that virus and it will target that virus for destruction so you don't get sick. And that's amazing. But you're asking the question, but we're talking about why vaccines don't work, not how they do work, right? Well, in order to understand how that works, you have to understand that the flu virus is incredibly unstable. And that means that the flu viruses themselves like to change themselves. They like to basically turn into a whole bunch of different strains. Now remember, strains were just basically the shape of the flag, right? So I'm saying that these viruses like to alter their flag's shape. Now, what is that called? A mutation. So if this strain, a flu, mutates and now turns into this, well, now you can see the flag shape looks different. If the flag shape looks different, if you get infected with this particular flu strain, do you think you're going to be able to fight it off very well? Well, likely not, because remember, the antibodies that you learned how to produce look like this and look like this, and neither of these will fit onto that flu virus, right? So in that case, your B cells, when they come into contact with this guy, they've never seen him before. So they have to go through that same whole process that takes two to 14 days to actually learn how to eventually produce those antibodies to make them look like something like this, so they can actually attach to that antigen. And you can probably guess in that two to 14 days, you will feel sick because it'll take a little while to learn how to fight it off. And in that way, it's when the vaccine strains don't match the actual strains that you're getting infected with that these vaccines do not work properly. But let's say you do get infected with that strain that looks like this. Well, in that case, you've already stimulated these B cells to learn how to make those antibodies that attach perfectly. So in that case, this process of actually neutralizing these guys will literally only take minutes to a few days. So therefore, you will neutralize basically all of these viruses in a very short amount of time. And that is why a lot of the times you hear doctors saying, hey, the flu vaccine may not prevent you from getting sick, but it will drastically shorten the amount of time you will be sick. 
Would you rather be sick for minutes to a couple days or would you rather be sick for potentially two to 14 days if you didn't get the vaccine for that strain altogether? So the question is, how do we actually decide what strains to put in our vaccines? Well, it's usually based off a couple things. Number one, previous strains that were kind of popular the last year, as well as strains that are actually rampant in the other hemisphere. So if we're in the Northern hemisphere, the Southern hemisphere is actually in the opposite season. So if they're in the winter season, we can see what strains of flu are going around there and potentially predict, hey, maybe we want to put those strains in our vaccine for our upcoming winter. So that's how vaccines sometimes don't work, but also how they do work. And if you ask any scientist, they will say, get your flu vaccine. It's better safe than sorry.